Hey everybody, it's Diane Gale here from the blog and YouTube channel Sustainable Slow Living and if you have been hanging around on Facebook or Instagram, you know that I have talked about making rose hip syrup. And um, I was afraid that we weren't going to get a frost before um, we left Northern Maine. And I was thinking that I was going to have to pick the rose hips before the first frost. And I was a little disappointed about that. But the other night, or I should say the other morning when I woke up, um, there had been a frost and I got pretty excited. Um, I hope it was a frost. I don't know. My windshield was covered in ice. Uh, so that may not be the same thing as a frost. I'm not sure. Anyway, my windshield was covered in ice. I thought frost. I got excited. I went and picked the rose hips. I would have had to pick them soon anyway. I couldn't just continue to wait. Um, as we get closer and closer to it being time for me to go, I'm trying to, you know, jam in a bunch of videos and stuff like that. So, they are picked. This is a rose hip. This little beauty is the fruit of the rose bush. I guess most of us wouldn't think of the rose bush as having fruit, but it does. And this is what is left after all of the, the, when the flowers die out and fall starts to come and the rose wants to spread its seed, it creates this little seed pod. Inside of this seed pod, there are, well, seeds. Um, so you're going to want to gather these. The reason that you want to gather them after the first frost is the first frost makes them sweeter but they're still good to work with even before that frost. Once you have gathered them, you want to leave them sit out on your porch at least overnight, kind of spread them out, maybe on a sheet pan or something, and let them sit out there so that any bugs that are in them will kind of wander off. They won't stay in the hip once the hip isn't on the plant anymore. Uh, these had very few bugs, but they did, they did have a little worm in them. So anyway, they are bug free now. And I want to show you how to clean them and get them ready to make rose hip syrup. Okay, you guys, so I'm going to try and do this from the back side of the camera. It feels a little awkward. When you gather your rose hips, you want to wear gloves because roses have thorns. And um, you probably won't have a lot of greenery that will come off as you're pulling your rose hips, maybe a little bit. Um, so you'll get rid of all of that. And then you will have your hips. Here they are, a rose hip. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take a pair of clippers. These are great clippers for working with herbs. Um, they're just trim shears. You can pick them up just about anywhere. And you're going to want to cut that stuff off the end, the kind of crown as it were. And you're going to want to cut the stem as close as possible. So all you have left is a hip and then you're just going to want to take your trim shears and you're going to want to just cut the hip in half and it's ready to brew into some rose hip syrup so you can take these rose hips you can just clip um, you know the crown part off and the stem part off and then you can take the rose hips and you can pulse them in a food processor and you can cut them up that way. But quite honestly, when you already have them in your hand and you've cut off the crown and you've cut off the stem, it's just another step to dirty the food processor. It does take a little bit longer to clip them all in half, I will admit that. But really, I would rather do that than clean the food processor. And it's kind of a, it's a meditative process for me. Whenever I'm working with herbs, um, it's a time that I just feel connected to the earth. So I prefer to just clip them in half with the shears, with the trim shears. So I've got about a cup of rose hips here and I have two cups of water that I have brought to a rolling boil. I'm going to throw these rose hips in. You don't want to cook them at a rolling boil, but you do want to let the water come back up to close to a rolling boil and then turn it down so that they just simmer slowly. 
Once you have them simmering nice and slowly, you're going to put a lid on and you're going to let them cook for about 10 minutes, I'm guessing. It really is all going to depend. What you want to happen is you want to reduce the liquid by half. So you want to end up with just one cup of water. The rose hips are going to soak up a lot of water just by themselves. However, we are going to squeeze that water out. I don't know, we'll see how long it takes. I'm thinking about 10 minutes or so at a low simmer. So that's when I'm gonna come back and check. And if it's ready, then you and I are gonna make some rose hip syrup and you're gonna be amazed at just how easy it is. Keep in mind that putting the lid on is very important because whenever you're cooking a plant material um, in water, infusing it into water, which is what we're doing right now, you want the volatile oils from the plant to stay in the pot. So capturing the majority of the steam helps to keep the volatile oils in the pot. Now, as you can see, there's still a lot of steam dispersing. And of course, that's pretty normal, right? That's gonna happen. But if I were to take that lid off, all of the steam and all of the volatile oils would just be going up into the air. We want to try and keep as much of them as we can in the pot. Okay, you guys, so it was not 10 minutes. It was 20 minutes. I think we're pretty much reduced to half. That's always a tough one because it's really hard to tell until you measure it. So the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to take this mason jar. I'm going to put this... Uh, strainer in it and I'm going to take this cloth this is a this is a cloth that I get from the Amish store so you can use any kind you can use like a muslin or a cheese cloth here but I'm going to take that and I'm going to drain the rose hips out into the jar One of the things that you want to be very careful of when you're doing this is um, inside these rose hips, there's little hairs. And you want to make sure that you get all of those hairs strained out because they'll irritate the inside of your mouth if you eat them. These smell so fabulous. Oh my goodness, like really, they smell amazing. So then I'm just going to take these hips. Now, if I was just using a cheesecloth, I would probably be inclined to, um, to strain them again because of those hairs. But with this cloth being as fine as it is, I'm really not inclined. And another thing that you could do is you could just let this sit open and um, let it cool down. And then you can take and pull it up and twist it and just get like all, you know, twist it like this and then just get all the herbally goodness out of it. But I'm going to be making a lot more rosehip syrup. And for the purposes of this video, I am just going to take that and put it aside. I have just about a cup here. Actually, where is my measurement? So this line right here is a cup. So I am just under a cup. And I'm okay with that. Um, when you're making an herbal syrup, a good general rule to follow is... Um, to have one cup of herbal infusion to one cup of honey. And that will make a, a reasonably thick syrup. So I have a cup of honey measured out right here. And I am going to go ahead and put this in the syrup. Now if you've let your rose hips cool and you've squeezed them out, you can take that infusion the rose hip infusion and you can put it back on the stove and just warm it up a little bit um, before you put the honey in it because you're going to want your honey to melt. This uh, spatula isn't the best tool 
for getting this honey out of this jar. Okay, you guys. So, there it is. Um, I should go ahead and push this down inside. And then I'm going to take this whisk and I'm just going to blend the honey and the, um, the rose hip infusion together. Try and get a little honey off the side there. And that is some really amazing rose hip syrup. So rose hip syrup, what do you do with it? Um, there are so many things that you can do with it. I have listed out um, a lot of things over on the blog. And as always, more information than is here in the video. So there is a link down below if you want to go and you want to check that out. Um, I can tell you, let's see, it is fabulous on um, pancakes, French toast, or waffles. Um, it is great with ice cream um, on top of yogurt. You know, just a little drizzle is all you really need. Um, it is terrific, um, a little bit over the top of some rice pudding. Uh, there are many, many things that you can do with it. It does have some health benefits. Of course, you know, it's very sweet and you shouldn't consume a lot of sugars, but it is honey that it's made with. And if you're using local honey in particular, then that also carries its own health benefits. Um, rose hips carry a lot of vitamin C and several other vitamins, some which aren't really commonly found in food, and it's a great immune booster. So if you're looking to use it for your health, those are ways that you can use it. More information about how to do that in the blog, but mostly what I use rose hip syrup for is to create beverages. You can use the rose hip syrup in alcoholic beverages. So a gin and tonic with rose hip syrup is out of this world. Um, I rarely drink alcoholic beverages anymore, so I often make like mocktails, like non-alcoholic cocktails, and it is great um, used in mocktails. But mostly I put some ice in a glass, and I put a shot or two, if I'm feeling pretty indulgent, of rose hip syrup in the glass. And I pour club soda over the top. And I just enjoy it like that as um, a nice, refreshing floral beverage. So get yourself some rose hips. Make yourself some rose hip syrup and you find your favorite way to enjoy it. And let me know down in the comments what that is. I would like to thank you as always for being here with me today and we're going to get together again really soon.